Hello and welcome to the first installment of Underworld Diary. This is a new series where we deep dive into the world of organized crime and tell the stories of some of the major figures in it. Today we are going to focus on an often overlooked gangster that was around in the heyday of organized crime in the United States. Today we will take a look at the story of their ish godfather. James Coonan. When people think of organized crime, the Italian Mafia is often what comes to mind. But during the heyday of the Italian Mafia in New York, there was another organized crime group that flourished deep inside Hell's Kitchen. This was the Westies Gang. This group was comprised of Irish criminals and associates that operated in the most rundown part of New York at the time, Hell's Kitchen. This neighborhood was flooded with drugs and rapid with all types of crimes amongst those that lived there. Growing up in this area made you tough beyond your years, as every day would be a struggle. Growing up in this area, James Coonan was constantly surrounded by drugs and violence from an early age. Being born one year after the end of World War II, James Coonan was born during a time of relative instability, with people coming back suffering from PTSD from the war. The already violent Hell's Kitchen ramped up even more. In order to protect himself, the young Coonan to boxing, learning skills that will be vital for his rise in the criminal world, while also giving a young Coonan the confidence needed to survive in Hell's Kitchen with some heavy hands and time to kill. It wasn't long until Coonan began to get into trouble. It started with petty crimes, liking stealing and fighting, but wrapped up as he got older, building a reputation as a tough kid, Coonan started to venture over into the world of crime. At the time, Hell's Kitchen was a melting pot for new immigrants, resulting in the formation of different gangs fighting for control. With constant warring between the gangs, it wasn't until Conan's late adolescence that the Irish took firm control of the neighborhood. At this time, the leader of the Irish gang and ultimately the leader of Hell's Kitchen was Mickey Spillen. Mickey Spillen was a feared and respected boss who was linked to crimes including racketeering, extortion, and assaults. However, he was most widely known for his kidnapping for ransom racket. This was done by many members of Hell's Kitchen and was seen as a great way to make a quick buck. This racket involved kidnapping other criminals throughout the area and making their associates or families pay a ransom to get them back. This simple scheme is where James Coonan and Mikey Spillen first came across one another. The rift between the two first started when Coonan got word that his father was beaten and kidnapped by Spillen. Although James was only a small-time crook, compared to Mickey Spillen, James decided to get revenge and restore respect for his father and himself. To do this, James found out where Mickey and his crew were, pulled out an automatic rifle and opened fire on the crew. <laughs> Luckily for Spilani and his crew, Kunin didn't hit anyone. The shooting, however, did do a lot for Kunin's reputation as being brazen enough to shoot at the boss of their mob made him gain respect throughout the neighborhood. However, this shooting did more than just gain him respect. It started a long and violent war between Kuhan and Spillen that would last for years, but this war would have to wait, because just as Kuhan began to take over some of Spillen's territory, he was arrested for an unrelated murder. This is what many thought would be the end of Kunin, and would be set to prison for life. However, he was only sentenced to ten years in prison for the murder. Before heading off to prison, he was able to build strong connections with other criminals in Hell's Kitchen, including the infamous Mickey Featherstone. Kuhan named this new crew the Westies, and was the start of a new era in Hell's Kitchen. On top of his new gang, Kuhan also made vital 
connections with members of the Gambino family before he was shipped off to prison. After completing his prison term, Kuan came back to Hell's Kitchen in the late 70s. Here he began to build up the Westies gang in order to take over the Spilani's empire. Over the next couple of years, Kunin and his bolstered up Westies gang began to take over rackets and territory previously owned by the Spilin crew. In addition to bolstering his own gang, Kuan also went back to strengthen his relationship with the Gambino crew. It turned out that this crew was headed by neither than Rodimio. To strengthen the new alliance, Kunin would carry out favors for the Demio crew, which were said to include murder, extortion, and kidnappings. The relationship between the groups continued to grow as both of them were able to use the Atherto advance they're standing within the underworld. This powerful alliance proved its benefits to Kuhn and the Westies as it's alleged that in 1977, while standing outside of his apartment in Queens, Mickey Spillen was shot and killed by members of the Demio crew. This murder not only got rid of Kuhn's biggest enemy, but also allowed him to take over the spot as boss of Hell's Kitchen. Becoming the boss of Hell's Kitchen was not only good for Kunin himself, but also good for Theta Mayo crew, taking out Kuan's biggest threat and allowing him to easily become the boss made Kunin indebted to not only the Demio crew, but also the Gambino family overall. The two groups would work closely together over the next few years, both helping the other gain more power and influence in the respective area. This alliance was put to the test when Kuan was summoned to go meet with the boss of the Gambino crime family, Paul Castellano. Being summoned to meet with the boss is always an unnerving feeling, but in this case, Kuan did not know if Castellano wanted to kill him. Kunin, with little to no choice in the matter, tentatively agreed to meet with the boss. However, before Kuan went to this meeting, he set up an insurance plan with his group. He told Mickey Featherstone and the rest of Thuistis to that, if they don't hear from him in two hours, to go to the meeting spot guns blazing. After setting up his backup plan, Kuan went to the meeting place where he was greeted by high-ranking members of the Gambino family, including the boss, Paul Castellano. His nerves about being killed quickly subsided as it turned out Paul was there to discuss the Westies becoming an official associate of the Gambino family. With his nerves gone, the conversation turned less serious and Kuhn lost track of time. Then looking down at his watch, Conan realized the two-hour window had passed. Kunin immediately jumped up to call his crew. Luckily for everyone involved in the meeting, the often high and an organizer drew lost track of time and didn't go to shoot up the meeting area. With the Gambino and Westies officially linked, together Kuhn continued to work with the Italian Mafia. This fruitful venture helped solidify the power the Westies had throughout Hell's Kitchen, creating years of prosperity for the crew, making tons of money, and being literally able to get away with murder. Kohan and the Westies enjoy life at the top, but during this time there was resentment being bred within Kunin's own gang, feeling as if he was turning his back on them and becoming to friendly with the Italians. Long time associate Mickey Featherstone confronted Cohen about his fleeting loyalty. Cohen responded with anger shouting Featherstone out of the room. This altercation led to Cunan deciding to set Featherstone up for murder. Cohen did this by having an associate murderer. Rival while dressed up like Featherstone, the plan went off without a hitch as Featherstone was picked up and sent to jail for murder, locked up for a murder he didn't commit. 
Featherstone decided to flip on Kuhn and cooperate with the police. This resulted in Featherstone getting off of the murder charge and resulted in the cops building and executing a RICO case against James Kuhn. This new cooperation deal saw Featherstone gathering and providing the police with information about the Kuhn and the Westies gang. Featherstone in this period would record conversations with Kuhn, provided a statement of Kuhn's crime and ultimately testified against him in court. With Featherstone's cooperation, the police were able to bring a RICO case against Kuhn. Dot at the end of the RICO trial, James Kuhn was found guilty and sentenced to 75 years in prison for leading and participating in a criminal organization. James Cohen is still alive and is currently serving this time at Lewisburg Federal Penitentiary in Pennsylvania. Nikki Featherstone is a free man to this day and has cut affiliation with the Westies and has been able to stay out of prison with Coonan behind bars. The Westies began losing control of Hell's Kitchen and the once solely Irish control territory has since fractured and went back to being split up between multiple gangs. Being born in Ajik poverty, James Coonan was able to rise to the top of the underworld through violence and alliances, but ultimately the constant need for more power isolated those who started the gang with him and resulted in his closest friends turning their back on him and ending the reign of the Westies in Hell's Kitchen. Now that wraps up today's entry into the Underworld Diary. If you are interested in hearing more stories from the criminal underworld, please subscribe and join the community.